automatically take you around to the different windows so you get it through that way. And the thing with the floor is it's only the floor that moves. The walls, windows, handrails, up where I'm at, they don't move at all. So if you're against the windows and the walls, you're going to notice they're kind of moving in the opposite direction. So just slide your arms along if you have to hold on to those handrails. Handrails to the floor do move with you, so if you feel like you need to hold on, you can go ahead and grab on those. We do sanitize the handrails between each trip. So if you follow the cables up to this canyon, you can see they go up quite a ways. We go over, uh, the length of the trip is two and a half miles over the cables. We go up 6,000 feet, so uh, two and a half miles. And we have to go over five towers that hold up the cables. Tower one straight ahead, that's the tallest. Each of the towers we go over, there's a sway back and forth, so that's the fun part. So if you go over the tower, you might want to hold on. Keep playing. Please keep wearing your face mask, covering your mouth and nose while you're inside the tram car. And I'm gonna uh, sway leave now. the windows open to get some pressure. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we have four more. That's scary. Enjoy the ride. Providing you with 360 degree views of the way to the top, which is level down the station. Elevation is 2,643 feet above sea level. And in some 11 minutes, we'll step out into a completely different environment. The high countries of San Francisco State Park in Williams, and an elevation for 8,516 feet. Get in my purse. We'll travel over two and one half miles of cable, whereby it's well possible. Yeah, At the top, the temperature averages some 40 degrees cooler. Oh, yeah. And the trees, flowers, and shrubs will be different. We'll travel over five towers in our journey. The tallest is tower. One at 227 feet, much the same as a 21-story building. It's the only tower accessible by road. All other towers and the mountain station had to be constructed by transporting workers and the materials to the various sites by helicopters in the process. With the new rotating tram cars, the improvements included new cables, drive system, and the removal of some 1,000 cubic yards of rock. We'll see survey marks along the rock face during the trip that indicates where rock removal was required. The new cabins are the first in the western hemisphere to rotate 360 degrees during the travel and are the largest of their type in the world. We're now high over Chino Canyon, once the summer home of the Agua Caliente Band of the Indians. Since there are many streams that flow year-round, the canyon has an abundance of things, including cotton, alder, black maple, and a great deal of wild grapevine. That makes me sick. It's been one of the many waterfalls that is fed by runoff from the mountain. During our upward journey, we passed through a variety of different lifestyles, ranging from the Sonora Desert to the Alpine Fringe. It's a little like making a motor trip from Mexico to Alaska. We believe this is the only place in Southern California where this change occurs. As we approach tower number two, at the top of the tower, you can see a 16 by 16 foot double helicopter platform used during construction and now used during the trans maintenance period. The rooms will be seen on the remaining towers further along in the car As you no doubt already noticed, we experienced a speeding rush as the tram car transitions from the track cable over the tower saddle and back to the track cable. This motion. All right, halfway is when we pass the other tram cars that heads down to the valley station. It was designed and built by the Monroe Company of Bern, Switzerland, and all moving parts and cables are Swiss made. The towers are American made. There's a total of 27 miles of various sized cables for cable and communication. The largest of these are the track cables upon which we ride. They weigh just under nine pounds a foot. With each of these track cables, they're all right, we're coming up to Tower Number Three. There's a little bit bigger sway over Tower Three than the other towers. So Hold on. on here. A little extra rock and roll to wake you up this morning. So here we go. Hold on. Uh oh. Oh. It's actually not exactly the same space. Because both cars are 
cars tied together on the hauling cables, which move with the car. You see, the drive system of the valley station is pulling that car down, and in turn, is pulling us up. The two cars are 34 feet apart when they pass. The Palm Springs area of transit has first been seen in the early 1930s by a young electrical engineer, the late Francis Crawford, who to this day is known as the father of the tramway. The original tramway was completed in September 1963 after some 26 months of construction at a cost of eight and a half million dollars, all the demands for the sale of the president's father. In April of 1998, Palm Springs Area Tramway contracted with the Bon Roll Tramways to oh, the construction and installation of these new rotate tram cars, one of which we were writing at a total cost of $12 million, just as in the very beginning. No tax dollars were used, and the cost of construction and the operation of the tramway was had so much on its road. It is between towers three and four that we reach the longest span of our journey. The cables stretch for more than an hour. Oh, my ears. Oh, my ears. No, you said they use it for general maintenance. I wonder how they get the cables all the way down and stretched and put in. All right, we're almost uh, to the top, but we got one more tower here. Last one, Tower 5. In a moment, we'll be at the uh, mountain station elevation up here, 8,516 feet, 2,595 meters. The uh, building up here at the top, the mountain station building, is a three-level building. After we dock here in a few moments, so I'll have you go right inside. You walk in on the second level, restrooms are there, uh, departure areas on the second level, gift shop. If you go up to the third level outside, a big deck overlooking the Coachella Valley with some picnic tables on it up there. You can also walk up to Grubb's viewpoint, that's a 360 overlook outside on the third level. Cafe is open up on the third level, uh, they're open the whole day up there. So everybody hold on for me folks, we're going to bump the sides here as we come up the last few feet to dock here. So a couple bumps.